Good morning, 352. I'm glad you're joining in with this this Sunday morning. Uh, if I could call your attention to the book of Judges and chapter 8 down at verse number 22, the book of Judges, chapter 8, I want to begin there at verse number 22. We're picking right back up where we left off last week from the story of Gideon. Gideon has already caught the leaders of the Midianites and the Amalekites. And the battles are done, and Israel's now in a place where they have some choices to make, some decisions about how, as a, as a nation, they're going to live their life. You see, back in the book of Joshua, and you remember us talking about it, about how the Israelites had made a promise. They made a promise both to Joshua before he died, and they also, at that same time, made a promise to God that they would not go after false gods, that they wouldn't have idols, that they would love God with all their, their heart and all their their mind and all their strength. They promised God that, that they would obey the law in which God had given them. And they made those promises. But up until this point, they kind of ebbed and flowed. They, they've served God at times. And then they ended up, as you remember, before Gideon calling out to God for rescue because they had began to serve uh, the Baal. And so here we are at a place where the battle is won. God has come on, come on the scene. He's given them deliverance and a victory over the enemies who were oppressing them. And here they're at a place where they get to make this decision about how they're going to live their life from this moment forward. They get a fresh start. And so tonight, I mean this morning, I want to look at uh, exactly the decision they make and how they go about making that decision. So if you would look with me down at verse number 22 again of chapter 8 of Judges, let me pray with you as some of you make your way there in your Bible, and then we'll pick up there in just a moment. God, we praise you. We thank you for your word. We, we pray, God, that you would give us the wisdom that we need to understand everything that you desire for us to see here in this text. We pray that you would move and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Judges chapter 8, verse number 22, it says there, the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. But, but Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. You see, all the other nations around them, they had kings. But Israel didn't have a king. Instead of having kings, they had prophets and they had judges. And the fact was, what God desired of the nation of Israel was that God would be their king, that they wouldn't have to have a man rule over them, but rather than having someone here rule over them, they had God himself to be their king and to be ruler. And so that's exactly what Gideon expresses right back to the people, even though the Gideon, even though the people want Gideon to be the king because they probably see his leadership and how he follows after God, and so they've already decided that he should be their king. But Gideon expresses God's will for the nation of Israel when he says, No, let God be your king. And, and that, that means something. That means something as you read that. Because when, when we say that God is our king, there's something that comes with that. If, if God is my king, and it, then, then I'm forced to think, about how, uh, to think about the fact that he is my creator. He has created all things that exist. And I absolutely believe that with all my heart. And I, when, when I believe that he is my king, I'm in a position where I need to love him, to love my king, my Lord, with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my strength because he is my king and I, I desire for him to be that. Uh, when, I, when I think about my Lord and his being my king, I have to, I'm caused to think about how my king came to this earth and how he died on a cross, not for himself because there was no reason for him to die on that cross for himself, but he died on that cross for me. I'm forced to acknowledge that. And, and when I think about him being my king, I, I, I love him even more because of what he's done for me. When I think about him being my king, it places me in a position where I need to obey the commands of my king. You see, Gideon is saying, you've got a king, and that's the Lord himself. So love, love your Lord. Not only love your Lord, but obey his commands. Remember what he just did for you and how he delivered you out of the hands of the Midianites and the Amalekites. He just did that. You know, don't forget who your king is. You don't need a king here to, to lead you so you can see him face to face. You have God himself. 
So again, they, they have a chance to have a fresh start with God. And what do they do? Immediately, they desire to have a king rather than just allowing the Lord God himself to be their king. But if you would look with me over at verse number 33 of that same chapter, verse number 8, because I want you to see what, what, what the Israelites do right after God does this great miracle in their lives. So Gideon dies. And so it was, as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals and made Baal Bareth their God. Thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side, nor did they show kindness to the house of Jeroboam, Gideon, in accordance with the good he had done for Israel. You know, when, when I read this, I go, you know, these are the people of God, but... Because when I, when I read about them, I mean, God came in and did such a great miracle in their lives. They got to see it. It was right there in front of their face. There's no way they could miss it. When, when 300 men go into a battle and they don't even lift a sword and they defeat an army of 130,000 with just 300. And the fact is, God fought the battle for them. They didn't even have to use their swords in that great battle. God did it. And they saw the victory of God and what God did in their lives and how he delivered them. And yet, they go right back to what they used to do. And because of their decision to, to not obey his command, to not love him in the manner that he desired to be loved, then they're going to go right back into a state of oppression. You, so, you see, the thing is, when, 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 when we observe God for who He really is in our life, there's some things that ought to change. There really is. Instead of us trying to work for everything we have, uh, we should believe in our Lord and know that He has the provision that we need. He can be sure that, that our needs are met in our life. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't work. Yes, you should work. And you should work in a way that would make God proud of you. You should work in a way that would bring God honor and glory. So work in that way. But remember, when it comes right down to it, the talents that you have that you use from day to day just to do the work you do, where do you think those talents came from? You see, we got those talents from God himself. God gave those to you. And so whenever I think about something that I may have done, I realize, you know, that I didn't really do it, but God did it through me. And I praise him for what he's done. But not only does, does, does he have, uh, uh, does he provide the provision that I need in life, but I recognize the power of God, the one who rules over me. And as I recognize the power of God, I really don't have a choice but to also recognize his protection. God really does take care of me. And because I know that my Lord is taking care of me, then I have this thing that, that many people don't have. I have courage. Because I know that I'm not leaving this place until God is ready. And if you are a believer, you know what? You're not going until he's ready. It doesn't matter if you're not a believer. When he's ready for you to go, you're gone. And so I hope that you have a relationship with him on when that day does come and you do meet him face to face. So we have provision, we have protection. There's this other thing that we also have when he is our Lord. We also have a promise. You see, there's this day coming when all this is going to come to an end. It really is really going to happen. You know, there's a lot of people who say that, that, that this right here is just a bunch of junk. That it's really not true. There's contradictions in it. But you know, I've never had anybody show me a single contradiction in the Word of God. And the thing is that one day the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that, that Jesus is Lord. They're, they really are going to do that. That's really going to happen one day, just as the Bible has said. It really doesn't matter what anyone has to say about it. The fact is it's true. And one day we're going to experience that moment. And there's a promise for those who, who have the righteousness of God. There's some who have that. And those who, who have put on the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, well, you know what? There, there's a kingdom that's, that is already created for them. It's a promise that God has given us. So keep that in mind. You know, when God is your king, we have provision. We have protection. We also have a promise. You know, when Gideon dies in verse number 33, he may have died in this moment, but when he closed his eyes in death, he opened his eyes in that very moment, looking God face to face. You know, that day's coming for all of us. I hope that you'll find comfort in knowing that God is our King and knowing that the power of his might he could use in order to help and meet the needs of every single one of us. Would you honor him with your life? Would you live your life for him? Let me pray for you. 
God, we praise you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to read your word. And God, we pray that you'd be honored, glorified, and blessed by everything that we've taught this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.